Hello and welcome back to the channel, my name is Scratchy, and today we're going to be using the replay system to do a kind of like VOD review light of one of my games. Now here's the reason why I'm doing this, I forgot to record this gameplay, and I'm finally testing out some Severog Jungle, uh, but more importantly I'm testing out Overlord Severog Jungle, and I actually think that maybe my initial assessment of the new Overlord is not as accurate as I could have been. Um, I, I kind of looked at the item and was like, oh, I don't know if I like that item, but I think it could be good in some use cases. So let's go ahead and take a look at this gameplay and uh, watch how Overlord Severog does. I'll probably, like I said, try to make some notes about myself to, to do a kind of like VOD review light um, as we move through this gameplay and see how it goes. So we started off with a ward like I usually do. I usually skip that part, go back to base, pick up sentries, and now we're on our blue buff. I remember I get a little turned around here for some reason. Um, I don't know why, <laughs> like I don't know where I want to go after this, but I was going to do a blue to red side clear uh, and then I get like really confused. Look at me, I'm like, wait, where, where am I going? <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're just going through this and keep in mind, especially for y'all that are going to be playing with more Severog jungles, this is a scaling jungler, you know, he's not going to be like ganking super often, um, really doesn't have much of a gank presence till level three at minimum, so, which that's what most junglers should be doing. Um, but yeah, you're not gonna see a ton of like early to mid Severog ganks probably. He, he really just wants to farm and scale and get stronger. And then whenever he kind of like comes online, you know, levels, uh, you know, I don't know, I guess between three and six is really whenever he starts to come online. And I see that they don't have vision here, so I'm just immediately dashing, go for the Revenant, put my root down, and I'm all over him. Now they forced on the Richter, which I think is fine. Either which way, we get a double ward out, so I know that their wards are going to be up around that eight minute mark. So that's definitely something I'm trying to keep track of um, and thinking about. So we go on ahead and step here. I know that they see me because I see that ward placement down, um, but I'm going to go on ahead and either look for a gank or try to steal farm. So I'm looking to steal some farm. Now the Fang Mao looks like he's heading this way. Again, I didn't know this, so they actually do end up coming in behind my teammates, uh, but really just looking to steal some farm, trying to get ahead, getting some stacks in, and the first blood goes to the Fang Mao. So. Now, I love this. I love that the Richter, for whatever reason, decided to come step in and contest me um, because I'm going to get a free kill and five more stacks. Now the Fang Mao chases after me. I hear him flash. I flash, right? Um, just easy way to put the spacing out. Now I have his flash timer as well, and we can go on ahead and go back to base. So really not a terrible start. I've got a thousand gold, which is going to put me at my cleaver. So you can see I do pick up that uh, barbaric cleaver, and now I can get back out on field and uh you know come check out my red camp or my, my five camp and just get back to farming right get back to farming all right max in the q max in the e i think that's the most appropriate way to go about it i want to try to see if i can help out the shinbi a little bit here she kind of you know spaces out a little bit i'll do a little bit of damage to her health bar and then i'll try to lead that into a river buff so i see my count is going for the river buff and then i'm going to go on ahead and start looking for some farm here so again any opportunity to potentially invade i don't know where the fang mao is but i'm also not too terribly worried about it um you know i'm getting a little bit poked out here I actually got really really poked so i have to just run out and i actually end up running over to my grux so that way i don't get caught out by the mid so uh enemy howitzer you know put in some work there you know kind of slowing down my invade you know griefing my health bar a little bit but uh, i've got a little bit of health remaining so i'll just go on ahead and safe farm a little bit this this again um you know just me being you know like a, a scaling jungler wanting to farm oh keep in mind huge huge point for um for jungle severogs uh smiting using your hunt as a last hit does give you stacks so make sure you're doing that and i'm just going to continue to build the overlord I actually kind of like doing it this way because we can just like speed through the parts that aren't super important um i like that a lot so sweeping through here always a good way to potentially find wards i don't find anything you can see i'm kind of camping out for the river buff again another stack nice nicely done and we're right back to farming you know i'm not ganking a whole lot um realistically ganking is just kind of like wave state dependent too like if the waves are gankable i'll, I'll go for it you know i'll go for a pre-6 gank i'm not you know this isn't chimera where i'm like intentionally trying to hit six because that's really when your ganking comes online and chimera can do a little bit of health bar griefing where you just kind of like dive out and get some some damage on the health bar um but ultimately you know i'm just trying to get my stacks in now i'm level six you know i think i tried to get that one but i didn't hit I'm waiting here a little bit to see if there's any potential, but nothing, so I just go ahead and sweep. I remember this. I go to contest the Fang Mao, and he actually beats my ass. I remember being really surprised at how much he was hitting me here. Um, so, 
gonna go ahead and keep it a little bit chill I see that he gets engaged on and I'm just trying to peel him out there. So we were able to, you know, trade an ultimate for an ultimate. It's, you know, not the best scenario in the world. Again, sweeping through the same kind of a similar position um, as I'm kind of hanging out for some of this farm. Looking to push this wave in. I don't remember if the Countess died or where the Countess was, but, and then Howitzer's here. So I was like, okay, I wasn't expecting Howitzer to be here. So I just got to dip because again, he's their off laner. So I just dip, get somewhere safe, and I'm going to go ahead and back. All right, we have our Overlord. Our Overlord is online now, and so now that's going to scale up my Q. A little bit of damage on my Q. It's going to give me a bunch of health, and I think it's a really good early, like, aggressive option for a couple tanks. Sweeping through here to see if I can get some invade. Um, you know, just like I said, you know, you can see kind of my intentions, right? I haven't had a very present uh, or, like, a big presence in the lane this game, uh, but I am stealing a lot of farm and keeping myself ahead. Um... And I don't know why it swapped. The camera does that sometimes. So we're going to go look to see. Oh, I remember this howitzer. This was really, really interesting. Super interesting. He he ults the wave to push it under tower as the Grux leaves. And I end up doing this dance with the howitzer here. Um, that's actually a little bit annoying because it's hard to commit to him here. And I was hoping that the Grux would pinch in um, because it's basically a guaranteed kill. And I end up missing my ultimate. And uh, I have a lot of missed ultimates this game. It's one of my weak points with Sev. And I actually think that um, that's, a like I said, this being a kind of like self-review light or a VOD review light. Right? It's a kind of interesting talking point. I'm, I'm not actually very good at Sev because I don't play him a whole lot. So I can definitely get a lot better at this hero. So definitely something I'm going to be working on here in the future because he's like an actual jungler to me now. Um, but yeah, we end up like kind of catching him out. I can throw down some abilities and I flash out because I'm not sure if I was going to die there. I don't think that I would have, uh, but also I didn't have any eyes on Feng Mao who's actually here. Um, so if I would have stayed, took the extra shot, maybe he would have flashed in or something and then taken me down. So a little bit hard to say. Now, looking at the game, after Overlord, you want to start getting tanky, so I'm going to start building like a Tainted Guard, probably. Um, something like Void Helm, Tainted Guard, uh, Crystalline Curious, whatever you really need, or whichever direction you feel like going in is probably what you're going to end up doing. I'm getting my timer on my red, and I'm actually running straight to my lane because I see them getting into like a little bit of a scuffle now. It's just to choke in, just in case, uh, but they don't actually end up needing me, and I can just continue to do uh, what I do. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, Sev, not my best hero. Definitely some things that I can work on um i think that like his sacking in the jungle truly does make him like a jungler now and i think he's a pretty phenomenal jungler probably one of the top two or three junglers right now in the game and definitely worth playing uh, in that regard so i got to get a little bit better at stacking on him because I, I definitely mess up quite a bit just because like a lack of discipline um you know i need to wait like an extra second or something like that again sweeping through really common sweep spots and he just drops a word on me as i'm sweeping so i'll just go ahead and clear that um there may be a potential invade here i don't know if i saw that ward but either which way you're kind of seeing a consistent theme all right you're seeing a bit of a consistent theme where i'm just like going for invade so you're messing up some of my stacks there. And it looks like I, I saw the Grux die to the enemy Fang Mao. So I'm assuming he's taking my blue side. And we actually saw him on the map there a little bit there. So all right, we're coming out for the gank. We go for the root. We miss the root. I'm going to go ahead and bat him backwards. He's going to ult me. And I'm going to just chase him down and get the kill. So. Now, I step out of tower range. We maybe could have dove that, but I step out of tower range because I don't want to get ulted by the Richter. I'm just going to go ahead and take the win on that, right? And then we can just go ahead and kind of back up. I don't know if we're going to force a Fang Tooth. This wouldn't be a terrible time to go for it. So you probably see me pinging it. Yep, looks like that's what I want to do. I wasn't actually sure. And I saw them place this ward, so I go ahead and sweep it out. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and start this. Um, no vision on the Fang Mao. Last we did see him, he was in the off lane or in my jungle. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and focus this down. I kind of hate when people do this where they go like over chase kills Like I think you can zone a little bit, but um, ultimately you want to commit. All right, the Feng Mao comes in He's early, right? We just go ahead and take him down and actually I need to take this back because this this is one of those like Feng Tooth where you you're gonna get it, but it, they were actually able to respond fast enough that it allows them to kind of clean us up so you're gonna see i literally just leave um it, it's not a winnable fight at a certain point and you kind of just like recognize that but we take him down you know i'm really watching the smite so i smite it 
And then I turn and see this, and I, I recognize really quickly there's just no way to win that. We were way too low. Their whole team is here, essentially. You know, four-fifths of their team is here, essentially. And so I just dip out. So um, this game starts off really rocky, and then we kind of pull it together. Um, and that, <laughs> dude, that almost looks like a fucked up decision to make, but I, I think it was still, like, the right play to just get out of there because there really wasn't anything for me. Check the mini prime really quickly just to make sure nothing's going on there. They don't rotate into it. And then right back to farming. You can see I build my horn plate. So I'm definitely full sending that uh, Tainted Guard, which I think is good because their Fang Mao is really like the front runner of this game. Um, and I can see the whole red jungle here now. So I see that Fang Mao's in the off lane, or in the duo lane, sorry. I always call the opposite lane off lane for whatever reason. I'm just gonna full rip his jungle. Um, again, a big theme of mine here. I'm just farming, I'm scaling. I, I think that like, a, I'm not saying that this is what every sev should do, is just like not gank very much. Um, but if you do have a sev, pay attention to how they're playing and pay attention to the fact that, you know, this character does scale. Give them some time, right? Um, give them some time to know, or for yourself to know that like, hey, he may not be super present. He's definitely gonna come online later. Um, so I'm right back to farming again. My blue was taken at some point and we can just keep on moving. All right, my dual lane is pretty pushed up. I actually don't have vision of this like 2v2, but now I do and I wanna get there. So I flash in, I help get the first kill. The Revenant it gets taken down by the Drongo. Nice little double kill. So I wasn't able to save the seal from the Revenant ult, but you know, we pick up a double kill, a couple assists for myself there, and ultimately we get our Drongo a couple kills, which is really, really huge. And I'm just consistently farming. Now, another thing I gotta get better at is I don't think that I have um had like any like i don't have much awareness to stacking sapphire's mantle it's new to me i don't really use this item much so i need to just like be more attentive to that uh, again you're gonna see me miss ults i think i missed like two or three ults this game which is really disappointing um because that needs to be a big moment but um yeah i wanted to see if there was a potential opportunity to help out my grux um i didn't think with the trajectory i could get there so you know what i said okay i'm gonna steal more farm so really consistent theme of me just like stealing as much farm as i can and uh you know trying to make this work for myself getting those stacks in when i can i actually think i stacked kind of slowly this game but I, like i said i think it's an inexperienced thing i'm sitting on a lot of gold so let's see we finished the tainted guard and now we're probably building into void helm next i don't remember exactly if that's what i, I do but uh, we got a couple kills on the enemy team which is pretty solid this should be able to lead us straight into a fang tooth i'm sweeping around looking to see if i can catch up the fang mal we force his right click um and we can just go for this now so um all right they're starting to come in let's go ahead and back this up here Let's go on ahead and back this up here. We'll take a look, because I think this is another one of those that kind of end up cleaning us up fights. Uh, but we are progressing the game. So it's a pretty even game, and we do have their steel down, but we have Richter down. So this is maybe even a little bit of an aggro call for us, um, which I like the call, but I think that it gets a little bit hairy. So this is a pretty rough run here. I remember I tried to ult the Shinbi to get her away from the Drongo, and I miss, which I, I really don't know how I missed that one, but just trying to buy some time if possible. Now, here's the thing. We go down here, uh, but we were able to get the Fang. So it's like, you know, it sucks to, to lose three people. It definitely sucks to lose three people, but at minimum, we were able to continue to progress like our our fang tooth advantage so next fang tooth would be fang three which gives us eight percent stats so arguably not really worth it but at the same time we still got value so i would i would probably call that an even trade which is not necessarily what you want um but you know not not the worst thing in the world so uh, you know steel is able to kind of hold down this tower for a little bit the fang mal goes in and takes a little bit of damage and that was actually my first death so let's, we'll go ahead and hop back on myself yeah you can see i'm building toward the void helm and I'm looking to see if there's any potential to fight here. The steel goes in, so we're just trying to chase here if we can. Big follow-up there. Big ult. Straight into some follow-up. So they overstay. The Fang Mao's running away. I'm looking for a cutoff. And I end up coming in behind him. Now, at this point, at this point, we have three down. Once 35 seconds on the Fang Mao, I'm calling Prime. Um, I know that. I know that I'm calling Prime because I remember it, but I also know that that would be a really good call. We have a we have a, a 15 second window on two of them, but we have a 35 second window on their Smite. Um, so you know, if we can get picks here, great. Uh, you know, we kind of pinch in on the Shinbi. We chase her down, and now look, I'm instantly spamming for for Prime. Instantly spamming for Prime. 
we just want to do this because this is a this is a nice window of opportunity here we could probably get it halfway down or dead you know before the thing mal could ever even step this direction so as long as we commit to it really big play here nice now I was gonna back, but I remember thinking I was close to getting an item. I need like 1500 gold, 1400 gold. So I just stay on field a little bit longer so I can get this Void Helm. The Void Helm's gonna be a lot more sustained for me, um, a little bit more healing. So I messed that stack up, so I wait and go back for it. Yeah, so you're seeing me full clear this side. And again, I, I don't know if the Sapphire's Mantle is bugged. I think it is. I don't think I don't think the right side UI over here in the replay mode actually works. Um, but I, I remember feeling like I did not do enough uh, when it comes to to stacking the Sapphire's Mantle. I could have been a little bit more attentive to it. I only I feel like I used it very minimally. All right, so we get our Void Helm. And we're back out on field, and I remember feeling like I'm a little scared for our Drongo or yeah our Drongo, um, but we try to find a pick here. We end up forcing. And we, we lose a couple people, so that's that's pretty rough, right? Like, we're barely starting to get our uh, our push going. We do get a pick on the howitzer, which is nice. But we're, like, starting to get our push going, and we lose a couple people, which is um, not great. But we trade them. You know, we're the ones that have the the orb or whatever. So it does suck that we don't really get a better push out of this. I'm going to back so I can go buy. I'm starting to build. They have a Revenant who's, you know, crit focus carry. I'm starting to build a Warren's Faith. I want to build like a really strong uh, tank item, a little bit more armor for myself against the Fang Mouse. So Warden's Faith is just a natural, um, a natural pickup here. All right, let's go ahead and take this back because I didn't really pay attention to that, that catch. All right, let's take this back. All right. So we're stepping in here and looking at their positioning, they were like in the pit for some reason and they like can't really get out at this trajectory. So I remember thinking like, yeah, we definitely want to go in on them. So I'm clearing out this ward and I see them and I dash into them and I throw a root, which is going to catch uh, at least the Revenant. And it looks like the steel sees me, the counter sees me, they see the play that I'm looking to make and then they're looking to follow this up. I also, I, if I remember correctly, I can probably look at the UI and see. I have a flash, so I always have like flash spin around ult potential as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and watch this in like slow-mo. So we grab that, we're looking to put some damage down. I was turning to look for an ultimate um, and the irony is I think I missed this ultimate too. Yeah, I, I just like I'm just like not used to the range of it. I, I don't play enough Sav. I actually did Sapphire's Mantle here, so that's good. And we're just like looking to clean up these kills. So, a couple kills for me. That's going to be more stacks for me. Uh, the Shinbi's being chased out by the Drongo, and we can catch up to real time. And this is going to give us Fang Three. So a pretty even game in terms of kills. Like they've been keeping themselves in it, and they definitely had like a pretty nice early game. But we've been like scaling. Like I'm Sev, I'm scaling. Um, you know, we have Countess is scaling, and you know. Thing Mal comes in. A formidable attempt. I respect it. We're going to take him down. We turn. We see the howitzer in the pit. We're going to go ahead and chase him down as well. And, you know, now, now we have four down. We've got Thing three. We probably don't have much time left on the orb. I think it literally just ended. Yeah. So the orb doesn't have much time, uh, but there's definitely some potential for a push here. So we're going to see if I can catch out the Shinbi. If she stays and gets rooted by me, that could be bad. Our Grex gets a little caught out. I'm going to throw a root for him. Steel throws a wall for him. Now, I think I make a misplay here. I wanted to come in behind the Richter, and I'm ignoring the Shin because I want to ult the Richter. Like, I think we could probably just push him in a really bad position and, like, take him down. So I ult the Richter, and we're just, like, looking to get a free pick on him. But we actually force the flash, so I don't think we get anything there. Our Drongo is super, super far forward, which I feel like is um, super risky because they can just collapse on him. So if the Drongo dies, it's, it's just a little bit of, like, him pushing a little too far on his own. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and base. We don't have our orb or anything, and I can just look to buy. So I buy a couple more, uh, you know, a little bit more armor and i'm just like saving up for the one's faith and let's see i think our drongo does die yeah just like really like crazy positioning right like way too forward on your own um if you're a late game carry you don't want to be on your own that far uh, ever grab a sack i think i'm already i've been full stacks for a little bit now and so unfortunately my teammates die i gotta back up i don't actually think they could they could fight me i could probably turn and fight them I, I legitimately think I probably should have known to turn and fight them sooner. I probably could have got a kill. But now with the Howie there, I got to back up. Not too worried. Now, here's the thing. I get low, and then she ults me. So, woo, I'm glad I live there. I'm glad I live there. Um, 
Yeah, a little bit crazy. I think I remember telling my team, like, okay, Aura Prime is up, but I need to wait for 1400 so I can get my uh, Warden's Faith. So I told my team, like, hey, give me a little bit of time. All right, buy my Warden's Faith. And I'm tanky, man, right? Like, I'm doing more damage with the Overlord that's been, you know, stacking up and scaling because of my other items. You know, that what I think is 2.5% health as physical power. So, you know, I'm doing more damage. And, uh, you know, I'm just really getting ready for this, this Orb Prime. You know, they're they're looking to get this pick. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to read what's happening. Okay, so we get a pick, and I'm thinking instantly that we we killed the Fang. My whole team could just back up and we can get orb for free. This is one of those things that people do in games where they overstay and they overfight. It it doesn't go terribly for us, but it's a waste of macro time. Like you want to end the game, you don't want to get kills, right? Like like think about it. Like you want to win the game, you don't want to get kills. So I start recognizing that my team's taking too long to get out, so I need to go to them now. And I'm thinking, Grux is dead. Like, he probably is dead. I don't know if he actually dies or not, but in my mind, Grux is dead. And we're going to lose him, which sucks because that, it weakens our orb. But I jumped on, on the Shimbi now. Like, I'm, gonna, I'm just on her now because I need to try to help out. Um, and we actually end up not losing anybody, which I think is great because now at this point, it's like, okay, the play can be restored. We need to stop wasting our window. We need to do this. So... We start this and look at the Drongo. Super up there still. Again, making me nervous. But this is our window, right? Like we're we're capitalizing on this window that we know we have. He gets over to us. So we actually lose a lot of our window here. That could have been much like much more macro and much more min-max in terms of how we spend our time. But doesn't matter. We're gonna grab the prime. And now I can start building whatever my last item is, which I don't remember what I start building. Oh, yeah, I was going to build a world breaker. I said, you know what? I'm doing well. I feel like I'm strong. I'm going to go ahead and, and build a world breaker last, uh, which I don't even think I get to. Uh, but now we have the big boy, the big fang. And we are in a position where the fang Mao has been split pushing. Our Drongo goes to deal with that split push. And we just take this for free. Uh, with the fang Mao not here, it doesn't matter. We can just rip this. So once the Fang Mao showed in that off lane, it was just kind of like whatever. Now we have Orb and um, Primal Fang. It's a pretty good position to be in. Pretty good position to be in. Okay, I need to stop this. Okay, so this is where we get crisscrossed because they actually pinch in on us and some of us back and some of us don't. And this is a really big moment um, because I, I make a pretty crucial play here um, whenever it looks like we're really falling down here so i'm gonna slow this down and again you can see some of us are backing some of us aren't so i think we have like one or two people that back okay the grux gets his back stopped the same time that uh, howitzer and like other players are pinching in so grux is low he does have a bunch of buffs on him but he's also by himself the countess is backed i'm stepping forward um you know to, to try to catch out the shinbi which is that even in itself is not the best play i just you know i didn't know that so many people were collapsing in and unfortunately with the way that it positions out here the grux gets taken down you know that's just, it's they just collapsed really really fast uh you know the drongo had started to back out and now i'm finding myself in this position where i'm out here with him uh, just by circumstance and then the steel is going to go down. I'm thinking to myself, is there any way I can save him? No way I can save him. So now, looking at this positioning, I remember thinking to myself, we have Prime, we have Primordial Blaze, and I need to salvage this play. The only way to win this fight, because Countess is in base, is to play through the Drongo. I have to play through this Drongo. If I don't play on top of him, if I don't peel for him, if I don't keep him alive, I'm not doing the damage. So that's what I do. So I, 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 I turn, I identify, I see the Drongo, and I'm going to instantly just like rush to his defense because I have to start making this work for him, right? I see them all over him. I get out, I get like towards them. I knock a bunch of them back. I'm just trying to buy him as much time as possible. I see him flash this way. I'm following him out, right? And now we're starting to get kills. Now we're starting to let him pop off while the Countess was catching up to us. So what really was just a terrible fight and like, you know, us getting caught out and all these crazy things turns into the drongo being able to pop off um it probably wasn't even the cleanest play i could have made like i probably could have done better with my positioning and with my ult um but this is that's pretty much the game winner there right like r identifying really quickly that like the win condition of that fight was the drongo and you know allowing myself to get over to that position and and get there for him to give him that space whenever he flashes like following up with him you know just like staying between my you know them and 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 him uh was pretty big and so full tank severog overlord severog i think feels really really strong i think there's really good damage potential 
potential. I think he is a, an amazing scaling jungler and probably one of the better junglers in the game. And we close it out. Friends, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, a bit of a weird format because I forgot to record it. I think it would have been a great gameplay to show off. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to, uh, to the channel for future predecessor content as is. Be sure to comment on there. Tell someone you love them. And I'll see you on the next video.